gents. I'm going to pause you for a second. Then I'm going to let you know we're going to talk. Won't be no music today, but give me a second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do this real quick. This gentleman right here, Pena Contracts Under Born Name, this is Mark Christensen. Now, I criticized his presentation on one of my videos because I was hoping that he would, that he would hear. Not because I am the master over this young man or I can tell him how to do his videos. No, what I criticize is that he's giving a lot of information, a lot of information that I've heard before. The only problem is he's not, he wasn't demonstrating where he's getting the information from. Here's a video, and yes, I'm giving a plug to the young man because the people on my channel if they were to go to another channel and I was to suggest they go to that channel and that person is not demonstrating where they're getting their information from, that would cause me a great deal of stress. Do, do you all understand what I'm saying? Because I can't send you any place if it's not going to be valid. Does that make sense? If the information is not going to be something you can rely on. So we're going to skip ahead. Uh, I'm at the 304 mark. And right about the 304 mark is where he starts to do something. I got to wait. So while I'm waiting, y'all wait too. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what he's doing now is he's showing people and he's going to do it throughout the video. I haven't even watched it. I just, because he has said that that's what he is going to do, then I am assured that he's going to do this. And by doing that, the people who are listening to him can now validate the information that he's talking about. So what I am doing, Mr. Mark Christensen, I'm now saying, hey, Mark, I'm giving you guys information. Take a trip. Go over and grab hold of the information. All right? That's me giving a plug to Mr. Mark Christensen. No, 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 no. Please understand. I have known of him for a couple of years, but I don't know him. So, no, I am not doing this because we worked out some some plan to, to take over the world. Oh, Lord. Okay, it, it ain't that type of party. Uh, you know, and let, let's make sure of one thing. There are some idiots out there who don't know me who think that I am sitting up here pretending to be something that I am not. Are you like Alex Jones? Are you saying that this is just putting on an act that you're entertaining people? It's a personality. <laughs> no. Talk to the people who know me. They'll tell you that I actually act like this. All the time. Okay. Especially when I do the grandmother thing. You know, I, I, I always do. Anyway, that's what I do on a regular basis because I was a guy. I loved cartoons and I loved the voices in cartoons. I love the fact that the guy who did Fred, 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 Fred Flintstone did so many Porky Pigs and everybody else in the Grandmama. Or if it wasn't Fred Flintstone, he did like a hundred and some. No, they said he did a thousand voices. His son was on. I was listening to the radio on NPR, and his son was on NPR talking about his father and all the voices that his father did. Now, if you guys hear that in the background, that's because the fan is blowing on me. It was hot yesterday. I'm going I'm to point the fan to the air for now, because this video ain't going to be all that long. But I'm going to point the fan to the air so that you guys don't get that little feedback, because I hear that it's different on your end. I didn't tell you to open back up. I did not say wake up, did I? Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I have to do it again because it was actually off. See? It says, turn dragon microphone on. It's actually off. So, yay! All right. Getting back to this is who I is. Now, I did the video yesterday and I was talking about what I've been through and what my day was like. I actually went into... I don't know if the video picked it up because it actually cut off sooner than it was supposed to. So, I was talking about what I've been going through lately. And I've really been feeling like trash lately. You feel like trash? Wait, trash ain't got no feelings. 
<laughs> you need to go ask your mother about that because I think that her in that trailer she's in, she kind of differ with you. Are you calling my mama trailer trash? No, I didn't call her that. You just did. Oh, well, yeah, I call her that all the time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Wasn't feeling very well, but I'm feeling all right. Let me show you why I'm feeling all right. Okay. Hey, hey, for the monkeys. This is the Penny Mac case, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I told the court. According to these learned, astute officers of the court, a claim of violation of constitutional secured rights is meritless. <laughs> that stupidity is laughable. Apparently, Penny Mac, no evidence of such loan services, okay, to be referred to throughout all of our presentments as Penny Mac, et cetera, all, appears to be represented by counsel. Again, there is no evidence on the record that documents the Penny Mac or the attorneys for this bank. There's no power of attorney. As I told you, if you filed a power of attorney and gave somebody your power of attorney and they went to Penny Mac and said, hey, uh, I'm here to check on this account. Penny Mac said, we don't have a power of attorney on file for you, so we can't speak to you. So you need to send us a power of attorney. Here's the here's where you can fax it to. Here's an email address you can send it to, and here's a physical address you can send it to. So until we get that, we can't discuss nothing with you. We're telling the court the same thing. You guys are asking us to respond to these idiots, and these idiots have not shown proof that they represent the so-called plaintiff. The plaintiff, the plaintiff, the counter plaintiff, has never shown up in the case ever. There's not one single document where they signed into the case. They didn't even sign the complaint. The attorney signed the complaint. When they did the amended complaint, the attorney signed the amended complaint. The attorney doesn't have the authority to do that. The attorney is not a party to the matter. They are claiming to represent the party, so they don't have the authority to sign the original complaint. The original complaint must be signed by the party because the party is the one bringing the complaint not the attorney on behalf. The attorney's only there speaking on somebody's behalf, okay? However, the courts are operate off a presump, presump, presumption. And because the court operates off of presumption, that's what they're doing. And the court is allowing the attorneys who are officers of the court to use their word. No, they say they're representing them, we trust them. I don't give a... You can do that all you want. You can trust whomever you want. But we ain't got to trust them. And so when we raise issue, we raise issue, ignorant mother. Okay. However, there is a claim that their constitutional rights were violated. They claim that their constitutional rights. They have brought forth a claim that individuals were conspired, have conspired against their rights without bringing forth any proof of conspiracy. Just the legend beliefs. We believe this. We believe that. We believe. Yeah, cheerleaders. Anyway, which is not proof of any level, or excuse me, on any level in any court because their beliefs must be supported by actual evidence and not presumed evidence. For the Constitution holds that the evidence in the court must be founded on facts and conclusions of law. The court cannot operate on presumption. The court suggested that Penny Mac's filings were improper. The court told Penny Mac, hey, guys, uh-uh, you guys are asking for default judgment? Well, this, this fool, uh, he, he keeps filing things, and they filing things in the case right behind them. The same documents look like the same, but they filing it. And, and, and we, we, we ignoring him, but we got to respond to the other ones who are part of the case. And so we got to deny your, your motion for for, for default judgment because he actually pointed out there's a controversy so we can't give you a summary motion there is a controversy that's they cannot get a default judgment and nor can they get a summary judgment ladies and gentlemen if there is a controversy if there's a controversy before the court they cannot just summarily dismiss your motion so if anybody ever wants to you do something and somebody wants to demur you you have to let them know that it's a default. 
never because there's a controversy. Look, Kenny Mac never properly served me. I was in an institution. Nobody ever served me no documents. Junk came through regular mail. How do you know it came through regular mail? Because my people told me I was added to the lawsuit. So when I got a copy, I said, hey, hey, for the monkeys. Y'all, y'all, yeah, look here, idiots. I'll waive service. And I documented the date that I waived service and all of that. That's what I was telling them. That's exactly what I was telling them, and they didn't pay attention. Here's the part that I want to show y'all. Okay, let's go on down. Uh, this is all rebutting all their presumption because they just filed a bunch of paperwork, and they, they just like, <laughs> they documented the fact that all we're doing is filing affidavits. We're not filing motions, so we're not following the rules. Ladies and gentlemen, the courts allow for the filing of motions. Go back and take a look. Hey, look, discrepancies in the code. The positive law, Latin, it, it's, it's, it's a positum. So our human-made laws, the oblique or, or that, um, no, that's obliged or specify an action. Here, positive law also describes the establishment of specific rights of an individual or group. Well, positive law is the Constitution. That's why everything else is only prima facie evidence of law. Okay? So, the concept of positive law is distinct from natural law, which comprises inherent rights. See, natural law or positive law. See, the concept of positive law is common law. Rights conferred not by acts of legislation, but by God. Nature's God. You know, like uh, nature's drink. Okay, anyway, positive law is also described as the law that applies at a certain time, present or past, and at a certain place, consistent with consisting of statutory laws. No, it doesn't. And case law, as far as it is binding. See, they're saying positive law is case law. Case law, there is no such thing as case law. Go ahead and look at the Constitution and see if Congress was able to create case law. Oh, wait a minute. Congress doesn't create case law. The courts do. Well, go ahead and look at the Constitution and see if there's any authority for the courts to create law. First Amendment says Congress shall make no law. First Amendment. Congress shall make no law. Not the courts shall make no law. So let's just get that on out of the way. More specifically, positive law is characterized as law actually are specifically enacted or adopted by proper authority, proper proper authority of government for an organized jural society uh, basically a society governed by laws all right ladies and gentlemen the term positive law titled see i put the word title there positive law titled refers or uh, references the title only and not the text of the code pay attention Positive law, when it comes to the code, references the text only. I'm going to give you an argument. Those of you who have never heard this argument before, because nobody ever raised it before. Well, I'm doing it right here, so I want you to pay attention. Pay attention! Let me tell you something. All right. Sorry, I know I'm going overboard. But, hey, I just had me some Juicy Juicy. By the way, I drank a full gallon of that pina colada drink that I made yesterday, and it was great. No, it's not alcohol, but it's just a pina colada flavor. And I went through that whole thing because I was dehydrated. That was a whole gallon. I made a whole gallon of that stuff, and it just, all that gallon was gone. Gone! From 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock, whole gallon of water. I told you, I've been going through gallons. That's But that's normal, because I do pretty much drink about a gallon a day. Now, for some of you, that's not a good idea. For some of you, you drink too much water, you can get water poisoning. Okay? So for some of you, that's not a good idea. So take it slow. You'll learn what your limits are. But water poisoning can kill you. That's why it's called poisoning. Well, my grandfather, he had water poisoning. Yep, he went into the pool and he never came out on his own. And he got poisoned by water. And he died as a result of it. Okay. When used with respect to the United States Code, 
as in positive law codification or a positive law title of the code, the term positive law has a special or particular meaning. That's because it's a legal term. It's not a law. Let's continue. In general, however, especially in legal philosophy, my philosophy, the term positive law is used more broadly. This, or excuse me, there's an overlap to be sure, but the meaning of the term as used generally, broadly, generally, same thing, is not identical to the meaning of the term as used with respect to the code. Yes, when you use the term, it's not identical as to the meaning of the term because the meaning of the term is not just positive law. When you refer to the code, it's positive law title. Let's continue. It says, and the distinction must be understood to avoid confusion. Well, didn't I just explain it? Let, let's see if they're going to agree with me because I didn't change this part. In general, the term positive law denotes, but it says connotes, Canoe, canoe, canoes, statute, i.e., a law that has been enacted by a duly authorized legislator. As used in this sense, positive law is distinguished from natural law. The term natural law, especially when used generally in legal philosophy, well, natural law has nothing to do with philosophy. That's the whole point. Refers to a set of universal principles, i.e., no philosophy and rules that properly govern moral conduct of humans. Unlike a statute, natural laws is not created by human beings. Rather, natural laws are brought to be by a pre-existing law of nature, which human beings can discover through their capacity of rational analysis. Within the context of the code, the term positive law is used in a more limited sense. Why? A positive law title of the code is a title that has been enacted as, sorry. Let's make sure that ain't supposed to happen. We gotta go back down to where we were. Okay. Let's get back to the positive law title. I think it was this section right here. Discrepancies in the code, positive law title, term positive law philosophy. I don't see that thing. Okay, anyway, positive law title of the code, the term positive law has a special and particular meaning in general, however, especially legal philosophy. The term positive law is used more broadly, went over that. I'm looking for the positive law title. Okay, we went over connotes, so that's where we is. As used in this sense, positive law is distinguishable from natural law. The term natural law, especially when used in a general sense, and legal philosophy refers to a set of principles, blah, blah, blah. But we're going to talk about governing moral human conduct. See, unlike a statute, a natural law is not created by human beings, but rather by that of a pre-existing law of nature. See, they don't want to say that there's a God who created laws. He put those natural laws in place. Here we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay. The title has been enacted as a statute. No. Ladies and gentlemen, the title itself has been enacted. Just the title, not the actual statute itself. Okay. Sorry, we changed all the states to capitals. Oh, you made a state a capital? That's right, see, state, capital, state. There you go. The act, uh, to enact title, a positive law codification bill is introduced in Congress. The bill repeals existing law on a certain subject and restates those laws in a new form. A positive law title of the code. The titles of the code that have not been enacted through this process are called non-positive law titles. Ladies and gentlemen, did you see what they just said? When they create a positive law title, they literally get rid of the statute at large. Don't take my word for it. This part is coming from Congress. Let's read it again. The bill repeals existing laws, not positive or negative, but it repeals existing laws on certain subjects 
and restates those laws in a new form, a positive law title of the code, just the title, not the actual code. We're going to have, we'll give you the argument in a minute. The titles of the code that have been, not been enacted through this process is called a non-positive law or a negative law. Sorry, because that's what a non-positive law is. If it ain't positive, it's negative. Man, are you sure? Because it doesn't seem like you're positive. Okay. Uh-oh. I didn't mean to do that. Let's get that back up there. All right. Non-positive law titles of the code are compilations of statute. The Office of the Law Revision Council was charged with making editorial decisions regarding the selection and arranging of provisions from statutes into non-positive law titles of the code. They went from statute to non-positive law, not positive law. They knew that they made errors. Non-positive law titles such as has not been enacted by Congress, but the laws assembled in the non-positive law titles have been enacted by Congress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you did you get that? It says non-positive law titles, just the titles as such, have not been enacted by Congress, but the laws assembled in the non-positive law titles have been enacted by Congress. You see that right there? Does that make any sense? It hasn't been enacted, but it has been enacted. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I love that. that. That's what I need to get from these people on their congressional website. This taken from the congressional website. There you go. From Congress, the court and the so-called officers of the court representing allegedly Penny Mac have relied upon the code when it knows that a Senate report from the very body that said to that is said to have an act and okay it's supposed to be inactive the code and i'm gonna leave it like that uh yeah let's do that let's see enacted the code has documented that there are more than 600 mistakes now, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this so that you understand what the argument is. If they've documented that the code, just the title, is inaccurate, and the text of the title is associated with the title, then that makes the text inaccurate because it's being misapplied. Then if the text is inaccurate, that makes the title inaccurate. Why? Because the text follows the title. They're one and one. They go with each other because one references the other. So since that is the case, the whole code is invalid. Now, that's not my argument. I didn't bring that up. Mr. Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald? Yeah, he brought that up. Fitzgerald, why are you bringing up stuff? Tell Fitzgerald to go sit down and just start leaving alone. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Code, prima facie evidence, actual evidence, and positive law. Now, I said actual evidence because if the code is prima facie evidence, pay attention. If it is prima facie evidence, i.e. not evidence, then why are we relying on it? Okay, so what I did is I took bits and pieces from that document and I put it all here. Any person who shall be injured in a business or property for reason of anything forbidden in the antitrust laws, 1934. Guess what the Supreme Court said? This is taken what the Supreme Court said. The Supreme Court said, mm -mm, what y'all doing? Y'all can't do that. That's against the law. The Supreme Court said that the location of the codification section does not make them part of the antitrust laws. Just because they're there and they say that, that won't make them laws. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the Supreme Court said that. Said that that does not make it a law. Now, although that's referring to antitrust, that's one case. So you must understand, if it's not law there, why is it law in your case? Now, see, in our case, the company Penny Mac used U.S. code to come our way. Now, somebody will tell you Title 18 is positive law. No, Title 18 is not positive law. The title, well, I'm sorry, you know what? They're right. Title 18 is positive law because it's called Title 18. As long as it says Title 18, Title 18 is positive law. However, the actual code, in Title 18 is not positive law. 
it's only prima facie evidence and you all need to start challenging that code. And remember, the code and the actual title go hand in hand. Put your hands together. Yeah, head now. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, that's what I wanted to bring to y'all's attention. Okay? This is what we're doing. We're challenging their stupidity. Why? Because they thought to rebut our presumptions. Now, look, ladies and gentlemen, look what I did here at the bottom. Because they're trying to rebut our presumption, they documented that we've been filing affidavits. Now, notice what I say to them. Hold on now. We, we almost there. Would you hurry up? I said, hold on a minute. We almost there. So, may each of these be construed as our stated claims. It's supposed to be our. Duh. So, I have to correct this and I have to send it to my people. I haven't had a chance to proofread it. So, we're going to get rid of that and that O-U-R. Our stated claims. May they also be construed as binding and necessary issues to be responded to with facts and conclusions of actual law. We are grateful that the respondents are responding and acknowledging that our, see, you can't have A-R-E, it's got to be O-U-R, O-U-R, our presentment, put the S there, got to have that S, our affidavits, uh, presentments, no, you know what, watch this. That's the correct one. And by law, affidavits must be rebutted. They cannot be stricken from the record, but must be rebutted point by point. An affidavit is founded under common law maxim. And in the United States, not E-N-D, but I-N, I am going to have to proofread this today, it is precedent that number but an affidavit stands true. Since the respondents, through their alleged attorneys, have acknowledged that our affidavits have been placed in or on the record. The rules of the court permit affidavits to be filed into a matter as supportive evidence, then this court has no authority to strike the truth if the opposing party has not rebutted any of the facts presented to the court based on firsthand factual information attested to and ascribed and witnessed by and before God. The very same sworn oath statement taken by witnesses before the court so help me god you know you swear to tell the truth the whole truth none but the truth so help you god they did that for centuries so you can't walk away from it now it's too late you already accepted the provisions of so help me god sorry you're stuck homie all right let's get on now let me show you the case law and then we're gonna move on gotta move on fields versus schromberg firefighters pension this is one case now let's show y'all because i got that from case text got it from case text you know i'm i'm plugging case text because they provide a good service okay this is an illinois case this case said furthermore a court must accept an affidavit as true if it is uncontradicted by counter affidavit or other evidentiary material hmm the clerk said that we didn't file some document in time. We said, all right, better take a look at that envelope. That envelope has a date stamp on it. It has a date stamp on it. Don't matter when you filed it. It matters when we mailed it. It was in the mail. Checks in the mail. Okay. This is somebody who asked to demure a case. It says the affidavit stands unchallenged and must be accepted as true. An unrebutted or unchallenged affidavit must be accepted as true. Here's Stone versus Trump. Stone versus Trump. Stone versus Trump. 2017. The new case. 2017. Knows what Stone and Trump say. Statements contained in an uncontroverted affidavit must be accepted as true. Oops. And here's a case you guys can rely on. Why? Because it's a Supreme Court case, 1976. For the purposes of our review, uncontroverted affidavits filed in support of a motion for preliminary injunction are taken as true. Oops. We're putting this in the document. All of these right here in the document. And of course, facts disclosed by an uncontroverted affidavit are accepted as true. Evidence! Tell me we ain't got no evidence on the record. Mother, I'm sorry. I apologize, y'all. Ooh-wee! Facts 
unrebutted in an affidavit are taken as true. Ooh it is well settled that courts will accept affidavits as true if it is not contradicted by counter affidavits or other evidentiary material. Y'all hold on one more second, okay? Just one. I needed to pull up casetext.com. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. It says top 23 recommended parallel searches, federal and state. Top 23. Okay, I don't want the top 23. I want all of them. Okay, but this is what I did. A number of other affidavits stands true. And it gave me 23 cases. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? 23 is more than enough. Okay? I wish it gave me more. I know there's more because KISS versus U.S. ain't here. But what it did is it gave me enough time. Now, this case says it cited 21 times. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see. I'm going to go to that case right quickly because I want to see if that's true. Is that if they said it 21 times. This is a firefighter case. This is the Illinois state case. At least I think it's a state case. I didn't look at the uh, the title of the case and the, uh, the case number. I should have paid more attention, but I ain't got, I ain't got no money, y'all. Can't be paying nobody's attention. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have a, a consult in an hour, so I do have to get ready to stop this video because the party has emailed me. They were one of those who did not notify me of the weekly arrangement. And so I have to rearrange. You know what I'm saying? So now that we rearrange, we got it going on. We got it going on, going on, going on. You got to get, get. Oh, you said no music. Well, that was new addition with the, the homie, um, uh, Bobby, uh, not Bob Brown, but, uh, you know what? Any Heartbreak is the name of that song, and that's with Johnny Gill. And I'm about to download me some Any Heartbreak because there, there, there is a part, I know I already downloaded it, but I got to take a look at it because there's a part in that that Johnny Gill just, I mean, the man can blow. That's why I like Johnny Gill because he know how to blow. You know, okay. I just I need to pause you guys. There's an overlay problem. That's why I'm showing a black screen, and I don't want a black screen. I want to be able to show you, and you guys can probably see, but I can't. So okay, here we are. Like I said, it broke down every single one, two, three, four, five. So that's why it's 23 times. Pay attention. The proposal, the purpose of a summary judgment proceeding is not to try a question of fact, but to determine whether one exists. The circuit court's task is to determine whether the complaint or answer or any disposition transcripts or admissions an affidavit on file construed in light most favorable to the opponent revealed a general issue of material fact and whether the moving party is entitled to judgment as a matter of law. Okay, that's one. Let's go down to the other ones because they, 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 they like clustered together. Okay. There's our full statement. To resist a motion for summary judgment, the opponent must provide some factual basis that would arguably entitle him to a judgment. There's a controversy, Your Honor. Furthermore, a court must accept an affidavit as true if it is uncontradicted by counter affidavit or other evidentiary material. The in the affidavit at issue. This person, Douglas Ellsworth, the village's director of finance, set out the following facts. That's what an affidavit is. Affidavit is not an affidavit of fact. The affidavit sets out facts. So don't call it an affidavit of fact. Call it an affidavit. Let it rely on its own facts. Okay. Sorry. My... Um... It was pulling up um, Lionel Richie's. Girl, tell me only this, that I'll have your kiss for always. And you want me by your side, whispering the words, I'll always love you. And forever, I'll be your lover. Cause I know with you in my arms, this love will last. 
forever because I truly, that was that song that was just trying to play. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's just one case, but that's what I do. I go here because it will give me the list of cases. See, let's do that again. I want to do just federal. But if I was you, I'll do federal and state because it doesn't matter what court you're in. Okay? Cases citing this document. Okay, so let's see. I, I do like that part right there. Uh-oh. I, 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 I did hit that button. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I'm, I'm not going to do that no more. All state Supreme Court. Hey, I didn't ask you to come in. What's, hey, well, Special Ed, we played you yesterday. He's doing taxing, y'all. He taxing. All right. And because we're doing an unrebutted affidavit, we're going to do all the courts. We're going to do statutes and regulations as well. We're going to do, wait a minute. There you go right there. That's what I'm looking for. Get rid of that. We're going to do all of the courts. I didn't ask you. Uh-oh. Hold on. Got U.S. code. Nah, we ain't doing no regular. Yeah, we'll do we'll do regulations. Okay, we'll we'll let that stay. It's gonna auto save. Okay, tells me to apply all them jewel restrictions. So let's do that again. Let's do it again. Do it. Let's do it in the morning. Sweet breeze in the summertime. Fill your sweet face. That is my song by my peoples. Papa, Mavis, Staples of the Staples Singers. I can't get this to do what I want it to do. I want to see how many cases we're going to pull up now. Again, remember, but an affidavit stands as true. Everything I put into the record ever is an affidavit. Always an affidavit. So... With that being the case, they have a thousand cases. An unrebutted affidavit stands as truth in commerce. Okay? An unrebutted affidavit becomes a judgment in commerce. Ladies and gentlemen, this man has not steered you wrong. Take a look at your contracts. They're affidavits. They involve commerce, and nobody's ever rebutted them. Okay, so here is your unrebutted affidavit. And remember, all I did was I searched all the courts, and we have over a thousand different results. So, what I'm suggesting that you guys do go to case text the same as I did and look up this information and do everything in affidavit. An unrebutted affidavit stands true. Then take a trip over to Mark Christensen and listen to what the young man has to say because he says it's important. And if it's important to him, then you might want to think it's important to you. So go ahead and go and get a man and listen. Okay, and then tell yourself what you think about him. Okay, don't tell me because it ain't me. You you, you, you people are judges. Y'all y'all be judging people all the time, which I don't even understand. All right, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gents, have a good day. We're just bringing you the information about an unrebutted affidavit standing true. Have a good day, y'all. Goodbye.